That's it. But I've deleted you. But everything gone. Videos, memories, happy birthday photos of stupid cakes I never wanted. Social media is bumped and so are you. I don't care if I've paid for Maggle if I'm not going. But cheerio, darling. I couldn't believe what he posted last night. He asked if I thought it was fair that all this money is spent to save folk who are well past their sell-by date. Prioritise the NHS, forget the care homes. <laughs> then all these other folks start weighing in. They were disgusting, horrible, saying if my gran has dementia, she won't know the difference anyway. COVID-19 would be doing her a favour. Put her out of her misery. Save the NHS a hospital bed. Save taxpayer money. Dad not like that. I thought I knew him. I'm not allowed to see her. But if I could... I tell her, don't worry, Gran. You didn't do anything. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. And I love you. There's something. There's something. I know it. She said a virus. <laughs> it's not a virus. It's not. What else? There's something. Oh. Hello? 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 You there? I had a dream last night. Been dreaming a lot lately. It takes me ages to get to sleep. And when I finally do drop off, I just drift in and out. My mind's like one of those massive industrial washing machines spinning round and round. When I wake up, I just remember wee fragments. Or I have this overwhelming feeling of dread I can't shake off. I remember this dream so clearly. Me and my mum are in this space rocket, getting ready to launch. <laughs> She's sitting next to me, smiling and chatting away, just like she used to. And I'm frantically pressing buttons on the controls, hoping I'm going to hit the right one and we take off. But I've never got a clue what I'm doing. And there's a countdown in this big loudspeaker, adding to my panic. Five, four, three. I've just about given up when, bang, we're up, off into the sky, heading for safety. I've not got a clue where we're going right enough. I just know that we're escaping this mess and we're going to be safe. And for the first time in weeks, I feel so happy. When I woke up, it took me a while to realise it wasn't real. Then the fear and the guilt kicks in. Are you 
£89 a box. That's unbelievable. <sighs> the cost of PP's gone through the roof. That's if you can get your hands on any. Seems to be more difficult to get your hands on everything than now. Even food deliveries. We banned visits from families a couple of weeks ago. Most people are understanding, but some folk are not happy. You're charging thousands of pounds and I can't even get in to see my mother. It's disgusting. We're just trying to protect everyone. The thing is, and all the staff will say the same, the residents are like a second family to us. As far as I can tell, we've no cases of COVID. Fingers crossed it stays that way. Now the government have announced a lockdown. That might help us. People might see how serious this really is. And then the next door, these new people, new women from the hospital. Oh. And that they're ill. They've got a virus. And then, um, well, I should send them a card. <laughs> Get well. Something happened. I know it. Something is wrong. People look at each other when I'm talking. As though I'm talking another language. Maybe they can't understand a word I'm saying. Something's not right. Something's wrong. I, 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 I'm all wrong. New people. I'm all wrong. I, 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 I'm at the back of my mind. Am I wrong? I'm wrong. Last night, a woman was in my room. not me. Thank everything. It's not me. Lovely thing. Like a panda. She said there were people in hospitals. Sick. Sick. Better. It's not me. There was a man in my mum's place. He got the virus. His wife and daughter rushed down to see him. But they wouldn't let them in. They had to stand outside the window in the car park. My wife brought down some perfume that she wears. Asked them to squish them in the room so that they had something connected to her. They turned his bed round so that his wife and daughter could see his face. Standing outside, looking in. Not been able to touch. Not even sure if he knew they were there. I couldn't do that. I need to get out of there. I can't leave her. She wouldn't leave me. in the rounds. The health secretary's ordered hospitals to push hundreds of patients into care homes. 20 new admissions this week, all from hospital, none tested. 
I've got to make sure that everyone's got an ensuite and they need to be in isolation for 14 days because we don't know if they've got COVID or not. We were due a delivery of PPE yesterday, but that's been delayed. Excess demand, they're saying. Tell me something new. We have so little to go around. The staff are wearing bin liners and homemade masks and just hugging everything together with sticky tape. What else can we do? I've got a red team going round with aprons and protective face masks looking after the residents we think might be infected. The staff are working round the clock to protect the residents. Isa, Tina, Margaret and Eleanor have moved in to the training room to protect their families and the residents. They were going to move outside and pitch a tent and I was scared they would freeze to death. They must miss their families so much. I don't know if I could do it. Kevin and the Bairns are the only thing that keep me going right now. Seeing their wee faces. Mind you, Kevin's isn't so wee. The lockdown diet's really got to him. Recruited a new member of staff this week, Erin. She's full of passion, enthusiasm and naivety. But she gets stuck in. Hope she lasts. It's a tough time, but we'll get through it. Can't wait till things get back to normal though. I really miss seeing the residents sitting together in the games room, having a wee quiz or a sing song. Barbara belting out lipstick on your collar like she was on stage at the Hydro. Bro times. I just finished a 12 hour shift. Rushed home to get changed out my uniform and when I got to the shops, there was no milk, there was no bread, there was no toilet paper, there was nothing. What am I meant to live on? Cheese and crackers? What is it with folk? Sorry, I'm a bit grumpy. Today was a hard day. Jennifer, Jacqueline and Sandra can't come in because they've all got COVID-19 symptoms. So they're all self-isolating for two weeks. So this morning was mental. Wee Betty was upset. She's got dementia. She doesn't understand why we can't let her out of her room. She keeps asking what she's done wrong and Telling us she'll be a good girl from now on. I went to check on her before I left today. She was just sat in a chair, facing the wall, not moving. It's like she was shutting down. <laughs> Lovely Barbara. God, she was desperate to get out today. It's her grandson's 18th birthday. She said that she had a present and a party to go to. <laughs> I got a birthday card for him, but she got confused. So I ended up writing it for her. They're saying we'll get tested soon. Hasn't happened yet though, but we were lucky today. We had a few girls in from the agency, Katie and Lena. They're brilliant, they just get stuck right in. Catty has been a few times before, so she knows some of the residents. God, she was saying this is her third care home this week. The busiest she's ever been. She said that if she wanted to, she could be working in a different care home every day of the week. Tomorrow's a different day, eh? People are dying in the home my grand's in. They've tried everything to stop it from happening. The two people got it first. They're both bedridden. And on opposite sides of the home. How could they have given it to each other? But how did they get it then? Where did they wheel their beds down the corridor and high five each other? My mum says maybe a member of staff's carrying it. But how would they know? Because they've not been tested. Those two residents died. Somebody's dad, somebody's mum, somebody's gran. My mum says there's even people who work for agencies in there. 
They could be going to more than one home, place to place. They could be bringing it to every home they work in. I'm not blaming them. They're on the front line trying to help. But if they're carriers and they've not been tested, then they're bringing death to my grand's door. May as well carry a gun. I saw a guy in the news saying, all targets are being met. These are extraordinary times. We're trying our best. Maybe I'm stupid. But how can carers go into a nursing home who haven't been tested? Why? <laughs> my mum can't bear the thought of my grand being alone. She remembers when my mum's mum died. <laughs> my grand was with her every step of the way, singing songs to her, making her happy. My grand's been put in a jail. She can't go anywhere. She can't see anyone. And she's done nothing wrong. Ye banks and blades, O bonny doon, How can ye bloom See fresh and fair? How can ye chant, ye little birds? And I say we be full care. Now break my heart, ye warm and word, that flatters o'er the flowery thorn. How oh, minds me woe, departed joys, departed never to return. <laughs> Death tolls rising by the day. Nobody's immune. Celebrities, politicians, mind you, bet they'll have the cavalry round them, eh? Very best of care. Unlike some. Some GPs are refusing to come and visit the care home now. And hospitals aren't admitting anyone if they can possibly help it. I'm supposed to have had a test. All my staff are supposed to have had a test, but only a handful actually have. How is somebody with no car supposed to make a two-hour journey across the city to a communal testing area after a long shift? Some people are not sure if they've got it or no, so they just need to stay at home. We're down to the bare bones in there. Five minutes to the NHS clap. We Betty died today. She's the seventh resident who's died in our work. We're supposed to be getting tested. I mean, I feel fine, physically. A bit tired, but fine. It's awful. To watch people you've grown close to, people who rely on you, die before their time. It's heartbreaking. It's awful. It's so awful. That wasn't part of the deal. I took this job to care for people, not to bury them. The residents are getting more and more confused. I seen Barbara today. She was upset. 
She doesn't understand what's going on. Her daughter wanted to take her out today. Part of me thinks she should have. Everything that we do to make dementia patients comfortable, we can't do. I need to wear a mask and I'm frightening them. I'm supposed to cuddle, touch and reassure, but it's me that's frightening them. At least Barbara would be getting a cuddle off her daughter. Maybe it's better than dying alone, like Betty. Went down to the care home with gloves and masks that Jim had got off one of his builder mates. The manager comes down, Carol. She says, I'm afraid we can't let you in. We're following government guidance. And you'll be a risk to yourself and to others. <sighs> government guidance? What about all the other government folks swanning off to their second homes? Driving through the country to get their eyes tested? I mean, it's one rule for them and another rule for us. Ten residents have died since this began. Funeral directors are driving their hearses past the care home and stopping just outside, just to give the staff and residents a chance to say goodbye. I'm not sure if the residents know what's going on, but it's a nice gesture. Some of the residents who were so active a few weeks ago are now fading away. They were happy, laughing, and now they're just lying in their beds, barely talking. Others are shouting for friends and family as though they've been abandoned. Maybe they have been. Got my test. I'm positive for COVID. So I'm at home, self-isolating. I don't know how long I had it, how long I was a carrier. I got into this job to care for people. Instead, I might have been the one that was infecting them. Obviously, I don't feel great. But what's worse is, I can't sleep. I just keep seeing their faces. Mr. Jordan. Alice. Mary. Patrick. We bay. I don't think I'll ever stop seeing them. They trusted me. I had invisible blood in my hands. My he, he belongs to me. It's, it's his birthday party. Oh, I need to remember. Uh, 
the wee girl. <laughs> Bright as a button. To remember the words. Virus. Oh, the, the thing. Um, uh, the music. The song. The song for birthdays. For his birthday, I, I need to remember for him. My, uh, my, <laughs> he's mine, he belongs to me. My boy, my beautiful boy, Mikey, Mikey. My mum was speaking to my gran on Skype tonight. She thought my mum was a TV presenter. We were all laughing, <laughs> thought it was hilarious. But it wasn't. Gran kept asking where my mum was. My mum was trying to tell her, but Gran was upset. She kept saying over and over, if I've done anything wrong, if I've offended her, I'm sorry. Please tell her to come see me. Please tell her I miss her. We break your heart. What do we do? Just leave her. We had a family meeting about maybe taking her out. Maybe bringing her home here. Jim was against it because he said we couldn't cope. Jim's a good guy. He's been a better dad to me than my real dad ever was. But I wanted to get up and punch him right in his nose. <laughs> Even though I know he's right, we can't just take her out of what she knows. I know that. I still wanted to punch him. I seen my mum was crying. I looked over at Jim and he was crying too. All of us crying for my mum, for my gran, for all the people who've had to suffer this, for all the poor people that have died without their loved ones by their side. <laughs> I turned 18 during a global pandemic. Covid-19 could have been a duff fourth-year boy band for all I knew. But it's not. I know what it is now. <laughs> my gran's my wee pal. I just want to sing with her and cuddle her. I can't. I try and get the staff to put together a wee pack of memories a wee diary of the last days. One of the girls is a bit of an artist and she does drawings. She's really talented. The way she draws, it's almost like a, a photograph. She always makes them look peaceful. Anne says she thinks the government don't believe that the people in care homes deserve to be saved. She says they think the old and frail are dispensable but they're the best of us. And she's right. I had a dream last night. I was dressed in a carer's uniform and I was in a nursing home. The residents were old, but not as old as my gran. 
I realised that they were a lot of the people I keep seeing on TV, the ones I've seen on the news, the ones who don't answer the questions they're asked, the ones who keep trying to blame anyone else but themselves, the ones who knew this virus was coming but told us not to worry, to shake hands is normal, no worse than a common cold, the ones who make one rule for us and another for themselves, the ones who don't see self-sacrifice, they see exemption, special circumstances, I realise they're trapped in this home and can't get out, but I have the key. They're all begging me for the key that can release them, that can free them from this awful confinement, where they're sitting ducks waiting for the virus to come and get them. Their shouting gets louder and louder. I look at the key, they're screaming now. I look at them, they're begging me to free them. When I wake up, I wake up looking for the key. I can't find it. But if I do, I'll throw it away. Goodbye, Gran. I love you. Sky is beautiful today. Not as many cars on the roads. And you can feel the air is cleaner when you breathe. Full of bird song from dawn till dusk. I look forward to seeing it tonight. I've always loved looking at that clear night sky. My mum taught me the names of the stars and the constellations when I was a wee lassie. She'd sit with me and sing a beautiful Gaelic song. Our mother's song. And we'd sit and gaze at the stars. I've forgotten just about all of them. Or some major as one. Great bear, the plough, I don't know. When I was wee and I looked out my window at night, I always thought I'd find answers in that star-filled sky. If I just looked hard enough. We could be up there, me and Mum, in a rocket, on our way to safety. <laughs>